Hi, I'm Chris Ryan. You've joined me at the Belfry. We're in this tailor-made performance center. And in this video, we're gonna help you with your short game whilst you are experiencing the poor weather over the winter. Just before we do get into that video, the details of my social media platforms should be in the core of the screen anytime now. You've got Facebook, you've got Instagram, and you've got Twitter. Please make sure you go ahead and follow me and connect with me on any of those. It's a good way for you guys to let me know some videos that you would like me to film moving forwards. So if you've got something you maybe want explained, if you've got maybe a swing floor that you're not happy with, you'd like me to try and help you with, please let me know via one of those and hopefully you will see your video on YouTube. Right, so this video today is following on from a video I put up last week. So if you haven't seen that video, uh, go ahead and watch that one first because that one sort of precedes this one. If you haven't seen that one, there is a link in the description box down below uh, for you to go and watch that one. So that video was all about pitching. It was all about how to maybe do some indoor practice while the weather's not so good. And it was all based around, can we get that ball to go into the air at the same trajectory each time? What that's gonna help you with is gonna help you with judging the distance that the ball travels through the air, but it's also gonna help you to try and visualize how far that ball's gonna roll out. If we can consistently control the trajectory, we can start to predict a little bit better about how that ball is going to react. So you need to be able to do sort of that exercise before we look at this one. So the exercise today is more based around using the golf club to control and change the trajectory, okay? So what we would tend to find is when we look at the more elite golfers, uh, so maybe the lower handicappers at your golf club, maybe the sort of professionals and certainly the people we see on the, on the tours, they tend to use around the greens one or two of their wedges, okay? So I've got in my hands here a 56 degree club. Now, this club is built with 56 degrees aloft, okay? That does not mean I have to always use 56 degrees aloft. I can manipulate the loft, I can change the loft, and therefore I can change the trajectory at which that ball goes into the air out. People who are very, very good at short game will have a very, very good ability to do this. They understand that the golf club has 56, but how they manipulate that and how they deliver the golf club to the ball will change the trajectory, okay? so. If you have seen that first video, you'll know that this blue tape here is on the net because when I stand up with my 56 degree club and I hit a pitch which I believe is going to go about 20 yards, it would hit the net about where that blue tape is. Okay, fractionally low but not too bad. So that's my standard trajectory if you like. On the golf course, what I need to do is I need to have the ability to be able to manipulate that trajectory. Okay? I need to be able to hit the ball higher and lower because the golf course will present me with different situations and that particular shot won't always be the one that's most suited. So we're going to do this in two different ways. We're going to do this with a little bit of setup, but we're also going to do this with a little bit of our technique as well. So if we can marry the two together, we should be able to control the trajectory. So this is great practice for this time of year. It's end of January here. Uh, it's pretty cold outside, it's pretty wet, a bit of frost, some snow in certain places of the UK. So it's not always easy to get out there and do short game. It does not, however, mean that you can't work on your short game. Now, I appreciate that not everyone's going to have this kind of setup, but some of you will hopefully have a net. You may well have a net at your golf course. If you have, you can do some really good short game practice. So let's, first of all, we're going to get you to do three things. We're going to get you to hit your standard shot, which is hopefully going to hit the tape. We're then gonna get you to hit one which is higher and one which is lower and see if we can use this golf club to create different flights, okay? So, let me go ahead and hit a lower one first and then we're gonna talk through a little bit about how I did it and what we had to do. So, let me just try and hit a lower one. So I'm still trying to hit the ball roughly the same distance which in my mind is about 20 yards and we'll see if we can get this ball going in a bit lower. Okay, so that hit the tape, certainly a good foot sorry, hit the net a good foot below the tape. So there's my indication that what I did in my setup and what I did through my technique gave me the correct result. It gave that lower ball flight. So now I'm gonna go and hit one a bit higher. Okay, and see if we can get that ball hitting slightly higher than the tape. Okay, and that certainly hit higher than the tape. That was almost probably a good three or four feet above the tape. So what are we gonna do? Well. Let's first think about probably the biggest influence on this, which is the loft, okay? As we said, 56 degrees of loft, okay? If I lean the handle forwards, I de-loft it. If I open the club face, which for right-handed golf means rotating it to the right, I increase the loft. So straight away, we can start to change the loft. So if I want to hit one lower, if I take my normal position, this was where I hit the tape from, I can start to walk forward of that golf ball, okay? Provided my relationship in terms of my body and my hand stays the same, but I add some shaft lean, 
I've now got a much, much better setup to send that ball in lower. We do not want, however, to start to move forward and then lean back. This is quite common. We try and get the sort of buttons back in line with the ball. Let's keep that sternum forwards. Now that setup is going to help me produce less lofted impact. The other thing you might want to do if you want to hit the ball lower is you may wish to walk in a little bit closer and raise the hand up. Okay, what that's going to do is going to steepen the swing plane. We're going to get the club working on a much steeper plane, which is going to help you be a little steeper into the golf ball. And again, it's going to help you launch that ball a little bit lower. So if you want to hit the ball higher, we're just talking setup here. What might you want to do? Well, I would keep the ball in the same position, but I would rotate the golf club to the right. That increases the loft on my golf club. Straight away, that should give me a higher launch angle. Contrary to what we just said, to hit the ball higher, I would like a shallower angle of attack. So what I'm going to do here is I might walk slightly further away. That does the opposite. That lowers the swing angle, that shallows the approach, and that helps me send that ball a little bit higher. So there's two things there we can do in our setup which is going to help you change that trajectory. Okay? Let's go through the technique itself. If I want a lower shot, what I want to do on the way through is I really want to try and feel that the grip is away from my body, it's as far away from my body as it can be, and I've got my arms pretty straight. Okay? So grip is away, arms are straight, and notice how my lead arm and the golf club still form a straight line. So if I demonstrate that for you, okay, you can see that follow through. That is going to give me a lower ball flight. So let me show you that one. Ball's back, stand a little closer, and keep that grip nice and wide on the way through. Okay, and there's that lower ball flight, and there's that release. If I now want to hit that ball higher, we've already discussed that we're going to change the setup. This time on the way through, I would like to feel that the grip is closer to my left pocket. You'll notice that my arms have begun to flex a little bit, and you'll notice that the golf club is overtaking my hands compared to the opposite one where it was more in line with that lead arm. So if I were to demonstrate that for you, we can see that's a very, very different release pattern, and that, coupled with a setup, will allow us to hit that ball on a much, much higher trajectory. So I'm standing further away, I've got the club face a little open, I'm going to change my release pattern and we get that ball a good foot above the tape. So, really, really good for you to experiment with these different ideas, these setups, these releases, and see if you can get that ball going in at different heights, okay? Two stages this. First one would be three shots, hit the tape, higher, lower, see if you can do that. Once you feel that you get pretty good at that, what I then want you to do is get some more tape, I haven't got any here, and actually put some tape somewhere on the net. So position it somewhere. And rather than trying to just hit higher than your sort of midline, actually try and hit a specific spot. A lot more difficult, but it's going to be very, very good if you can start to develop this skill, okay? I guarantee you that people with very, very good short games, you would find that they're quite good at this. You put something out there and they'll be able to hit that spot. Not every time, but they'll be able to get pretty close to it, okay? Judging distance out on the golf course is very, very difficult. We need to be able to control the trajectory. We need to be able to control the speed at which the golf ball has got. We need all these things in order for us to get that ball closer, okay? Just having a good basic pitching technique, unfortunately, isn't enough. Because on the golf course, you're going to be faced with shots where you need to flight it a little higher. You need, maybe you need to flight it a little bit lower. You need to control the rollout. You need to control the trajectory. You have to be extremely versatile with this golf club to enable you to get close to some of those flags, okay? Getting up and down more often is a combination of pitching the ball closer and putting better. There's two things that have to happen to get up and down. We're focusing on one of those. We're focusing on the pitch shots. We're focusing on can we control the trajectory? Can we predict the trajectory? And can we send that ball into the air at the angle that we choose? Okay, so have a go. I say, if you've got a setup like this, it's fantastic. You don't need to be outside in the minus two conditions or on hard greens, wet conditions. You can do some work indoors. You can start to get your pitching technique sound and get it pretty good, ready for the better weather. When the better weather comes, you can start to then do more random practice, different flags, control the trajectory, and start to work more on your feel and your visualization as opposed to technique. So this is technique work. We can then work on the other stuff when the better weather comes along. Okay, so I hope that video helps. Uh, I say, if you haven't watched video one, go and watch video one, because that was sort of the, the sort of one that precedes this. You need to be able to do that before you move on to this. But if we can start to do these things, your short game will be much, much better out in the course, and it's a good way to lower your scores by getting up and down more often. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please go ahead and do all the usual stuff. Subscribe, comment, like, all that kind of stuff. You know what to do there. Um, it really does help me, uh, and it just means that you won't miss any of the videos. Okay, so thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again next time.